Okay, so we have two more brands, uh, Cobalco and Hitachi. I think it's also it will be also nice to mention these brands as well. Uh, I'm a little bit uh, shocked that there is no electrical machine in Cobalco. And do you remember? We go around to the booth and we check the website and at the end of the day we find out that they really don't have the electrical units, right? That's true, they have a hybrid uh, machine, but it was not displayed here, which I really wondered. Um, Cobelco only has track-driven machines, they do not have tire-driven machines, so the tire excavators. Um, but um, that they do not show any electric option here, I was really surprised. They only had uh, diesel engines at this, at this exhibition. I mean, to be fair, the booth was nice, the products, they look really nice, you could feel the passion for it. But um, in terms of innovation, I feel a little bit the same like you. I was disappointed. I was expecting a little bit more here. What about Hitachi? I think there are some electrical units over there. Yeah, I remember um, the Hitachi booth really well because we had the chance to say um, hello to the chairman of Hitachi. And he um, advised the product manager to uh, show us around, to introduce products to us, which was also really nice. So. Thank you very much for that nice introduction here. <laughs> um, not sure if they will see our podcast, but if thank you, I enjoyed it. We had some really nice discussions about the products and back to your question uh, to electric equipment at Hitachi. Um, I don't really remember that they had a lot of electric options there compared to the others, right? Uh, yes, so they are also in an early stage. They are in an early stage. I mean, the, the excavator we saw was packed with technology, but it was diesel driven. It was not electric. And um, to be fair, we didn't even talk that much about the, about, about the power drive of that machine because it had so many, so many other options and technologies in that equipment. So we, we didn't focus on the, on the powertrain that much. Yeah, that's really interesting. And for the Hitachi, to be honest, I'm not aware of that high technology in the machine, especially the oil sensor where you can diagnose your flow problems uh, without having the faults in the machine. So yeah, mm. I think I think that's a super super important point when you are going to buy a machine. But I don't think that all the sales managers or all, all the dealers have this uh, technical knowledge about the Hitachi excavators. Yeah, I mean, what is really interesting at Hitachi, the guy told us they don't really have sales training. I wondered, because a brand who is, uh, let's say, technology leading, who has such good technologies, such intelligent technologies, um, is not really training the sales guys in a special way they should be trained, I was wondering. Because technology like that should be expl explained properly. You should know the benefits. The guy who talked to us, he had years of years of experience. So he was able and capable to explain. But I can imagine, I trained a lot of dealers. I trained a lot of sales teams. I can imagine if you do not have a specific explanation to all that features, you will never be able to present the customers the benefits. Back to that topic you mentioned, the oil checking. I mean, uh, a lot of other uh, manufacturers, they do have something like a remote service assistance, which means by the hours they can tell um, you have to do this service, you have to do, change that filter, you have to change that oil. But interesting here, and I think that's the point, they do have a sensor which, which is checking the oil condition in the machine. And you will then email if this oil condition is not good anymore. I think this is great because not depending on the hours, depending on how hard you use the equipment, you change your oil and your yeah. filters. This is really a game changer, but yeah. I don't know uh, if the customers have idea about this issue. And to be honest, uh, I checked the quarter reports of the Hitachi. So they are the, the market share is decreasing right now for their excavators. And yeah, uh, I think if they have proper training to their dealers and the sales managers, I think they can easily add 10% more market share. I, I'm not exaggerating. Um, I, I'm thinking from the customer's uh, direction because I think they are just comparing the prices and 
Of course, this is uh, not the cheapest product, but I think if you compare the features and the price of the product, I think it's easily deserve this kind of price level. Yeah, I mean, uh, to be fair, um, only blaming the sales for such a decrease in your market share is not fair because <laughs> you have, yeah, you have other things as well. I mean, I, I'm coming from that corner. You have other things as well. They are affecting your market share, whatever. But I totally agree that a brand like Hitachi telling us they do not have specific sales training. That's a big mistake. If you invest a little bit in proper training, if you prepare your sales team properly, specifically on sales conversations, sales topics, um, the right perspective from the customers, from different customer groups to your equipment, you can increase your share. That's Period. Sure. That's it. You can do it. Yeah. Then there's Absolutely a bonus question agree. for you. The bonus question. The, what is the best way of creating an argument for the customers if you are a sales manager? The best way to create an argument for the customer, first of all, listen to your customer uh, and ask him questions. And if you ask questions and if you know your equipment, you will easily find the argument he needs to hear to buy equipment. Yeah, you need to create a benefit, right, for the customer? Of course, of course. But first of all, listen to him. Listen to him. Ask him the right questions. Ask him about experience. Ask him about also about bad experience he had. Because then, then you can put the machine in the right perspective. You can present the right benefit in the right way to him. And I'm sure if the customer feels you understand his pain, you understand his needs, he will of buy. Course, of course, to get more information from Tobias, you need to visit his website to get uh, professional content. So I think we need to stop here for your advices. Otherwise, you will give everything free and nobody, <laughs> nobody will visit. Nobody will go into no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, it, it's okay. Knowledge is the only thing that gets more and more if you share it. So it's not a problem. I'm always happy to share knowledge and always happy to uh, to um, talk to the people, talk to the uh, talk to the whatever product managers, sales guys. Um, I'm happy to help. Maybe we can uh, we can add my email address here. Of course, I think that's even better than the website, mm -hmm. right? Um, if there's any question to this, if you want to put your product in the right view, individual view of your customer, hit me up. We can do that together. Yes, we are now sharing your details and also they can find it in the uh, info. So another area, machine tracking and remote operations. That's also a very hot topic, machine tracking. There are lots of companies doing this business by themselves and also working with the OEMs as well and remote operations. So for the machine tracking, I think uh, the biggest information we got is from the Caterpillar boot. They have quite various efficient solutions like cat command, where you can allow machines to be operated remotely from a safe workspace and uh, you can easily get information about the machine. So there are some packages as far as we learned, some subscriptions for connectivity and services. And of course, if you have a bigger fleet, uh, yeah, it can be quite beneficial for you. And they are saying that they are adding the AI, artificial intelligence. That's also a hot topic in everywhere and augmented reality. So yeah, I think uh, this fleet uh, management, machine tracking, uh, the data that you can get from the machines are getting much more popular every day, right? Yeah, of course. I mean, um, all these intelligent technologies, they will be more and more important in the future. But even here, you have to know your um, your customer well to uh, introduce him the right technologies, which are interesting for him. So if we, uh, let's say, start with um, the uh, autonomous driven construction equipment. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is, let's say, a trend uh, that you can see in different uh, products from different manufacturers already for a couple of years. I can remember back in the time Ham, um, they had the option to have an autonomous driven machine, mm -hmm. um, which I remember I introduced that when I did factory tours, like let's say six or seven years ago already to customers. Yeah. So that's, that's not a brand new technology, but what is new now, they combine it with AI. Yeah. 
They combine it with intelligent technologies. So display there, which was very interesting. Display there was um, a driver's seat or let's say an operator's platform where you can take a seat, you can operate the machine and help me. I think the machine was located anywhere in South America. I think so. Am I, I right? Yeah. I think uh, uh, on a side in South Exactly. Exactly. So we could see the machine operate live in South America from Paris. We could not only see the machine, we could operate that equipment. And I think in the future, this can be a game changer. Imagine you have a lot of job sites which are, let's say, dangerous to work in. If you're working in mines, if you're working um, wherever any rocks can fall on your equipment or anything can break down or your machine has a risk to slide or oh, whatever. This yeah. can be a game changer because you can sit in your office, you can operate this equipment, you're safe. And uh, if there's any damage, you don't, you don't risk your life, but you yeah. can still do a good job. That's interesting. Yeah, it will be fun, I think. So you may have full of operators from Bangladesh who are controlling machines in Paris, right? In Europe. Yeah, true. And maybe after 10 years later, everything is organized by AI. So maybe 10 years later, you don't need the operators as well. Because I think you will give imagine. enough data. Yeah, it will come. Exactly. I mean, imagine what is a big issue in the whole construction, uh, uh, construction industry to find decent operators. Yeah. The machines, of course, they are easy to use and they are intelligent and whatever. But still, you need a human up there to operate the equipment. And this human needs training. This human has to be has to be trained and educated on not only the equipment, but also um, the, um, the job site itself, the application. So if you have the chance to work remotely from your desk at any job site in the world, imagine this is, if you think a little bit further, this is great. Yeah. You can have, you can have first class operators in one day, the same operator working in Australia, and then he works in South America or in Africa or wherever else. I think this is great. This is the future. If you have this and also this will give like a little, let's say, upgrade to the um, to the the, 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 jo the job of the operator itself. Yeah. Being a high quality operator trained on different equipment. Um, I think this is the future. So maybe the guys who are uh playing too much video games would be the next operators, right? Exactly. And this is also, no, you're laughing, but this is also yeah, something that, that is that combining, be... combining the interests and the talents of uh, Gen Z. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. With the, um, the, with the needed uh, workforce or the, the needed work, the work that has to be done. This is combining both worlds. You have like a video game and you can work from your desk, doing a job um, anywhere. I think Not even now we are a little. Room, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean now we are a little bit, uh, a little bit in the future. But to be fair, if you if you think free, this could be yeah, this could be an option. Why not? I really like that to see that to see this operator working from Paris, operating the machine in South America. That was cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and also uh, I think Devon. Uh, formerly DUSA, they have some two concept machines, autonomous construction equipments, one dozer and one crawler excavator. So they they don't have they don't even have a cabin. So it's the design is also strange, but then uh, you are just giving the uh, information for them. Okay, you need to dig this place, you need to level this area, and just click the button, and they will do the rest. So okay, it will not. Maybe we cannot see these machines uh, next year or next in, in five years time. But of course, in ten or fifteen years time, I think we are not going to talk about the operators, right? Well, uh, I think we will always have operators. Yeah, I think it's not. Uh, it's not. It's not the near future where such job sites will be completely um, automated. I think we will see operators for a long time on job sites but it will change. We will have maybe less operators. They have to be, um, they have to be better educated, of course. Um, and another thought, which I want to share now is imagine 
how many things an OEM has to fulfill to safely secure the operator on equipment. There is things like noise level, there is things like vibrations, there is things like ROPs, FOPs, yeah. uh, exhaust, all those things which have to be um, which they have to have to be aware of when they design equipment this makes the equipment very expensive yeah expensive because in the focus of that machines is first of all the operation of course but then the operator the guy who is working with the equipment this guy has to be um, healthy even after 10 years of working with the equipment mm -hmm. so this is also a point um, which will change if there is a bigger move to automation on construction job sites. Uh, it will come, I think, yeah, because yeah, the cost is getting too much every day, labor costs, and it, as, as you mentioned, this kind of element, uh, environmental issues. So yeah, it will come. And uh, I, uh, yeah, sorry. Just one more, just one more comment. I mean, there is um, job sites where you um, know all the conditions. For example, asphalt job sites. Uh, a compactor or a roller working on asphalt, a tandem roller, you can on point set all the conditions which are important for a good operation to the machine. You can you can set it. You know your layer thickness, you know your temperature of the asphalt, you know the widthness, you know the thickness, you know everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is parameters you can you can tell the machine, and I can imagine these jobs they can be done. Automate, automatic or aut automote, remote controlled, whatever. Yeah. Automa automated, <laughs> you help me with the word, whatever. This is easier. If you have a soil job site, for example, it's not that easy because soil is naturally there usually. There you have rocks, then you have an area where it's more, a little bit more cohesive material, uh, whatever. You have material mix, you have the naturally given conditions and it's hard to get all the information to your equipment if you don't have a human there checking it before or um, reacting uh, reacting individually to the conditions he sees down there. Helping, of course, you can use sensors, whatever, but the, the, the information has to be um, processed by a human. And I think on job sites like that, where you create something new, new build road, new um, whatever city area, I don't know, where you have natural conditions. This is an area where it's tough to replace a well-educated operator. But on job sites like asphalt job sites, where you've got all the conditions before, we can set everything. It's it's going to be easier to replace Definitely. operators. And just uh, maybe we need to think a little bit further. Uh, there are lots of mines at the, at the floor of the oceans. So yeah, mm -hmm. we can use this kind of automated machines or remote control machines over there and there are some guys rich guys like Elon Musk he's trying to occupy the Mars and maybe he needs to dis have this kind of excavators to, to dig out the mine over there yeah I think yeah it's it, it will be a big topic for them as well yeah it's a futuristic thought but absolutely yes yeah. We hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please click the like button and subscribe for more reviews. Thanks for watching.